So it's Tuesday, the 22nd, 21st, 21st of uh, April. You wouldn't believe it, but it is the 21st of April. Extremely cold day. Wind's coming directly from the north, overcast. Horrible, horrible, horrible weather. We're supposed to have nice conditions this week. Don't see them yet. We had actually a wettish day there two days ago, which was a nice day because it was the first time you could actually say there's a little bit of a growth. But we're back to the really, really cold again. Don't know what's causing it, but it seems to want to linger on. Today's task is I want to get these heifers out. Bales are all gone. We have loads of silage at home, but I don't want to start drawing silage over on the 21st of April to these cattle because I have enough to be doing in the yard as it is. Here's an animal here and she's starting to jump. She was done 10 days ago, so she's what we call a 10 day repeat. Uh, my AI man is coming around now in the next 20 minutes and he's going to reserve her before she goes out. So we have 15 heifers here. 11 of them have been served so far. We have had one 10 day repeat. Now we've had our second 10 day repeat. That's unusual now. Never really see that in heifers. Um, I haven't seen that in a long time. We've had two there in a row and I'm hoping that's the end of that because I don't want to see any repeats at all. So I've been just out on the quad. I've turned on the electric fences. I've checked all the fences. Everything's set up now, ready to go. And I'm on my own today. My father's in an appointment. The kids are at school, my wife's at work. But it's not a problem. I closed that gate there. There's nowhere they can go. I've put a tape across here where the quad is. Even if they get through that, there's nowhere where they can go up there. They have to make their way out here and down into that back paddock where you would have seen the calves last year, if you remember. Now, I'm not gonna give them the whole paddock. By no means, I had to keep that, a section of that from my calves when they first go out because it's lovely and sheltered and I don't want the heifers grazing anything that the calves is going to be on and um, so the calves don't pick up worms as easily. So that's the plan for this morning. Get that done. That's gonna take a lot of work off my shoulders. I'm over here every day feeding and cleaning and feeding and cleaning and it's an hour's work each day that I'm going to be able to get back and that's going to be a huge weight of my shoulders. An hour is an hour. So I've that heifer in for service. Next thing to get these animals out. That's the pet. pet. You remember the pet? <laughs> the size of her now. Ah, oh, lovely. The gate just blows over. These cattle are going to go mad now when they get out. Go easy girls, don't hurt yourselves. I'm hoping they'll slow down a little bit and not destroy the fences. They're a bit mad at the minute. Oh, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. There's fences over there, I'm hoping they're not gonna burst through them. Because they can just get that excited that they just forget all about the fences that are up. Okay, here they come now. Slow down, slow down. Easy, easy. Look for the fences. Easy, you're not coming back out at all. You're staying there. Shh, go back. Shh, 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 shh. Go back. Calm down. I'll take them a wee while just to calm down, but last night I didn't feed them. I wanted them to be hungry. Go back, you, go back. You're not going by me. But I found when you leave them the night before and don't feed them and leave them that they're really hungry, they go out and they don't be too long before the heads is down. As you can see these ones here, they don't be long until the heads is down and starting to eat the grass. So we'll get this other animal done and get her out to join the party. The one thing I'll do now when I'm waiting for my AI man to come is I'll clean down the slats, clean down all this old silage and stuff. Just get the house all cleaned up and ready for power washing probably in a couple of weeks time. So I just cleaned the yard when it was at as well. It might look clean, but I cleaned it with the shovel because it's super dry. You wouldn't run a scraper over Because when you're walking in the chute and it's dry weather, you don't want all the stuff stuck to your feet. A wee bit of comfort and it doesn't take long just to scrape it out. So scrap out now, all cleaned. The shed itself, silage is all gathered up around the front here and it's all scrapped down as well, the cubic is in the slats. So it'll not be half the battle now when I come along to power wash it um, in a couple of weeks time. That's them all out there now, happy as Larry. Larry was fairly happy, I was so I'm told anyway. There's actually the pet. Remember the pet? <laughs> She's no pet anymore. Well, she is a pet, still a pet, but look at the size of her. She's by far the biggest heifer, an absolute brute. You have to be very careful around her. 
she can be very rough she can throw you just like a ball out of the way not to hurt you on purpose but just doesn't know her own strength and that's the, the thing about having a pet animal you just have to be really careful but she's a good animal she's done exceptionally well she is the bully she is the alpha of the group there's no doubt about that she will put them in their place and she tells them what to where to go and what not to do do you know what i'm in a bit of a rush today there's one little tactic i never really use but i did learn to master it recently someone did pass the power of it on to me so i'm going to give it a go now see how it works Boom. That is a great feature. Jesus saves so much time. I'm gonna test this fence before I go. I'm just after turning it back on again. Before I got it turned on, when I put my fence, half I walked over here, casually walked underneath it. And would you talk about trying to get her back out? She's not a mission which you go back near it. The fence was off. She seemed to have no problem going out through it, but wouldn't go back into the heifers. So I had to take the whole heifers away to the next paddock so that she would walk back out because if I took that down again they'd run back through it and I'd be back to square one call them after me up into the last paddock I waited up there for a little while till she decided to cop herself on and she can back out underneath it and now it's on and next time she touches it she'll need to put in dentures if we look here now see what we're like ah for the love of Jesus I don't know if you can see that in the camera but we're actually getting lights to the very top so we're doing well there's two hopes that are coming out through that fence now. Bob Hope and No Hope. First load of lime for the year. Jonathan's just coming up behind him here. He's just after dumping it. And Jonathan's literally just behind him. He's coming here to spread it. So I have to run him now to pick up his loader. And we're going to be spreading that. We're going to be putting on about two ton to the acre. Um, first of many loads for the year. To get off their darkest ground The gravity pulls you straight down Earth from a bird's eye view You should grow feathers and see this too
here with Jonathan, our contractor. He's put out the last wee bit of lime. We're going to do our hills. We're going to be ordering another load of lime um, probably next week. We're just trying to work our grazing so that cows can be off the fields, obviously, for a couple of days that the lime get washed into the ground. Um, it's given a bit of rain the night and hopefully that will come. But the leaf of the grass is dry at the minute, so it should wash in fairly, fairly quickly. Um, once it gets washed in grand, it doesn't do cows any real harm, but you'd like to see it in the ground before they come back and graze it. So that's why we're only doing a few fields now, we've about 20 tonne, we're doing two tonnes of the acre. So we're only doing a few acres and then we'll get another load and we'll come back and we'll keep doing the fields as they're grazed. I have to say one thing, them class tractors are a fine looking job. So I wasn't going to fit on this next part, but you know what? A lot of you might enjoy it, and a lot of you might be interested, so I said to just stick it in there. So, so you know me vice well by now. You see me doing lots of work in this vice. We have this vice, we got it second hand, actually, of relations of ours back about 30 years ago. And it's been battered ever since. It's a bit hard for me working with it now with that jaw gone on it. Look, it does need a bit of TLC. I'm not going to throw it out by no means. I'm going to fix it up. I'll put it up in a different shed um, and use it probably just for welding and things like that because I can't intend to do everything with it. But I've been looking around and I didn't want to spend big money on a vice because some of them are just crazy money and there's no way I was going to spend that. So I was up at my local co-op and I've seen one on the shelf. So we're going to rip this vice out. I already have the bolts taken out. We're going to lift it out and we're going to slip the new vice in and just get it fitted. This one has a swivel on it, which is going to be very, very handy as well, especially for sharpening things and working on things like that. So that's a nice, neat feature to have as well. So well, I have already have these holes marked out. I'm going to drill them out now and put the three bolts into them. Take a good look at it because one thing that's absolutely for sure is it will never look this good again. There. That's it. Oh, I see. So this... Okay, so mine didn't have that. So then you turn it up there, then it's locked. I see. So mine didn't have that on it at all. A couple of nice features to have. I remember when I was doing metal work at school, which I never really listened to when I was in class, unfortunately, but I remember the vices were similar like that, but I think they were all record vices, and I think they're really, really expensive. That was under 200 quid. Good enough vice. Can't see anything wrong with it. Hopefully it will last me a long time and maybe into the next generation. That's what we're hoping for. Job done. So I'm just going back over to my heifers a couple of days later after that lane was put out. And um, they're doing well since they went out. They're nice and happy and content. We haven't had any repeats or we haven't had any more in heat since. But one thing for sure is that it's nice to get cattle out. Um, it takes a huge workload off your hands. Home farm, do you know my petrol scraper? My Honda petrol scraper? It's developed a fault. We still have our cows in at night. You'd miss it so much when it's not working. I'm having to do it all by hand now. So I'm glad to have cattle starting to go out. Hopefully our cows will be out in a couple of days time as well. There's not a huge amount of growth, but you can see our silage ground is growing well now. It's starting to really move. Um, and it should be because it's coming to the end of April. You'd expect it to be much, much better than it is. But it is starting to look like it's starting to grow at least. It's been a strange old spring so far. Cold temperatures, weird weather. It seems to be the norm. The night before last, we've had a frost again. Again, it's not unnormal, but you just seem to be getting all the things that are unnormal now. So you might ask the reason about behind putting out lime in the fields. Well. We have had soil samples taken by Chazuk. It's part of the program that we're in. It doesn't matter what kind of farming you're in. You should always get soil samples taken every now and again just to see what your soil is actually like. We found that our pH had dropped 
um, quite a bit since the last in the soil samples were taken. So our pH in our soil was roughly between 5.3 and 5.8, I think, 5.7 maybe. And that had went down a little bit. We would have been around the mid sixes. So that's why we decided we're going to put two ton to the acre on our entire farm this year and just get them pH levels back up because that would affect grass growth an awful lot. And as I said before, it's the most important thing on the farm. I would have noticed our silage fields. I don't know whether it's related to that. It probably is, but I noticed that our yields have been dropping a little bit each year. We haven't changed the way we're doing things. We're actually putting out more slurry than we ever did and we're using the dribble bar now, which should even be better again. It just doesn't have the bulk that it had other years. And that basically could be locked down to our pH levels being wrong. We're gonna also be doing a lot of reseeding um, this year. Fingers crossed, meant to do it last year, but we're gonna be doing some of the year. And one of the fields we're gonna be doing is the top of this hill and a field over there at the back, which are all silage fields. And we're gonna be hopefully getting that done the year. If the weather permits, we just don't know. Last year was a tough year at the end to try to get anything done, so we didn't get it done. The pH is something a lot of farmers overlook, uh, believe it or not, and I am one of them. It's by speaking to other farmers as well, at different walks that used to be on years ago. Yeah, it's something that people didn't always address quickly enough. Um, we were told by the amount of fertilizer we were putting out, regardless what quantity you put out, uh, we're only seeing about half the return from it because of our pH levels being wrong. So hopefully that's gonna make a phenomenal difference. It's gonna save us a lot of money in the long run. I would like to also say today's video is sponsored by Jonathan Thompson Contractors, um, Canningstown and Coutil. He would do all our dribble bar work. He'd do all our lime work and receding work. It's also sponsored by Limestone Industries, Carrick Macross and County Monon. So, so thanks very much for that. It means an awful lot to us and we really appreciate it. For any folks, if you like our video, you know what to do. Hit that sub button, give us a like, leave a comment down below. We'll do our best to get back to them. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook and on TikTok. You know where our merch is. Until the next one, talk to you again.